Hello Liftoff friends, I hope you are doing well. Today we have a very sensitive topic about a superpower. It is about Russia trying to copy SpaceX's rocket designs. Why did this happen? To what extent is this plagiarism serious? And what is the reaction of Elon Musk? Let's find out. If you are new here, we warmly welcome you. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature. Let's get started. Recently, more and more companies are moving from the obviously outdated formula for creating disposable ships to spacecraft that can not only fly to Earth's orbit, but also return. While USA has become a trendsetter through NASA and SpaceX, Russia is considered the foremost among its peers when it comes to space research. Whether it's performing the first man and woman, first lunar flyby using Luna 1, or launching a space flight with more than one crew member via Vox God 1. You name it and the Soviets have achieved it. However, the long-held dominance of Russian space technology is being overshadowed by SpaceX, and so they're trying to guess by launching their own reusable rocket. About five years ago, SpaceX's Falcon 9 first stage booster dropped its first tail from the night sky, ignited one of its nine liquid oxygen slush ride engines, and touched down softly to a landing area. Eight kilometers north of its launch site at Kennedy Space Center, nine minutes after the communication satellite was delivered into low Earth orbit. Everyone in the world could see that the rockets designed to prioritize affordability and reusability rather than raw performance were feasible. He also promised to put humans in space permanently by completely changing the economics of reaching orbit. Three months later, another Falcon 9 serial number B1021 also landed. This time on a robotic ship, hundreds of kilometers from the launch site, deep in the Atlantic Ocean. The B1021 will fly again in less than a year. The first time a first stage rocket will be used twice for an orbital mission. As of 2020, upgraded Block 5 versions of the Falcon 9 have been reflown five different times for orbital missions, or even an unparalleled series of victories in space launch technology for manned missions. Meanwhile, Russia was making great strides in space exploration to build a reusable rocket that is somewhat similar to SpaceX's Falcon 9. The Falcon 9 has currently had over 100 successful launches, and this is making the Russians uneasy. To avoid running out, Roscosmos plans to enter the industry with a reusable rocket before 2026, which is especially important to them when the blue by Jeff Bezos is trying to use the original Shepard booster. Roscosmos has announced plans to build an AMUR that some critics say is a carbon copy of SpaceX's Falcon 9. The AMUR is a two-stage medium-range carrier launch vehicle with a burst design similar to the Falcon 9's. And what the Russians want to do is to launch it about a hundred times and at the same time to ensure a smooth vertical landing. Alexander Bloshenko, executive director for long-term projects in science at Roscosmos, said the AMUR would be as reliable as an assault rifle. The Falcon 9 has a grid or lattice wings fixed close to the top of its first stage, which can be seen in the design of Amur. The Falcon 9's folding legs can also be found on the Amur, which remains unnoticed. Contrary to expectations, it seems that Elon Musk is not in danger from this. He shares the same idea with Tesla, where he doesn't hide blueprints and makes them available for other competitors to replicate. Elon Musk tweeted and encouraged the development, saying it was a step in the right direction, while hoping that Roscosmos aims to fly reusably by 2026. He added that larger rockets would also make sense for lateral economies of scale, and the goal should be to reduce the cost per useful ton in orbit. Aside from the similarities, there are notable differences between Amur and the Falcon 9. Amur is designed to be a cheaper, smaller and less powerful version of the Falcon 9 at a cost of approximately 17 million euros per launch. Based on early estimates from Roscosmos, the price of the Falcon 9 is almost double at 38 million euros per launch. The height of Amur is about 180 feet or 55 meters, while the Falcon 9 stands at 208 feet or 63 meters. 
As for the payload, Amur can carry about 11.6 tons into low Earth orbit, but the Falcon 9 takes it on again with a carrying capacity of 25.1 tons. The Amur booster stage has five RD0169A methane oxygen engines compared to the nine liquid oxygen and kerosene Merlin engines on the Falcon 9. Amur has a central engine responsible for lowering the platform back to Earth. The engine is designed to operate three times, once at the time of rocket launch and again when the re-entry stage slows down in the heavier and thicker layers of the atmosphere. Whether or not you believe Amur is a copy of the Falcon 9 at the end, the capabilities of Roscosmos and space technology are enormous and should not be underestimated. So far, Elon Musk's SpaceX and Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin are the only companies that come to mind when we mention the term reusable rockets. SpaceX wants to bring FOST satellite broadband internet to the world and in particular to internet users in far-flung rural locations where download speeds are low and prices are high. SpaceX's globe-spanning satellite constellation should be capable of providing 100 megabit per second internet service to anywhere by the end of this year. You can expect that a lot of countries, no matter how urbanized they are or not, will be lining up to sign for Starlink services. And the more countries Starlink signs up as customers, the better the prospects for SpaceX's subsidiary promised IPO. One country that most definitely does not want Starlink, however, is Russia. The Russian State Duma, Russia's Congress, is currently considering legislation to impose fines upon any individual or company that signs up for Starlink, or indeed for any foreign operated satellite internet system, OneWeb or Project Kaper included. What does Russia have against cheap, fast, reliable internet from space? For one thing, Russian security services object to the internet operated by a foreign satellite network and would be immune from surveillance under Russia's system of operational search measures legislation. For another, they suspect that the Starlink is part of a US government plot to deploy predatory, clever, powerful, high technology, shock and awe to advance above all military interests. And yet, there also seems to be an economic motivation for this ban on Starlink and other satellite networks. As Ars Technica points out, Russia is planning its own satellite internet constellation known as Sphere. And in contrast to SpaceX's Starlink, which is a privately funded and privately built communication system, the 600 satellite Sphere constellation will be a project built and run by the Russian state under the aegis of its Roscosmos Space Agency. And that could be a problem. Sphere, you see, is rumored to cost 20 billion US dollars to build and may not begin to launch until 2024. That's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, like the video and subscribe to the channel to see more space and SpaceX news. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.